Because, you know, the Republicans, when they first heard about this, as you guys write, um, they thought it was going to be very hard to defend Donald Trump. Uh, and they turned mostly to a process argument. They made it into a debate over process and an unfair process and, you know, an unfair impeachment because they are having no voice, et cetera. So Karin, um, did Schiff, was choosing Schiff a tactical disaster on Pelosi's behalf because of what Rachel said they she he didn't have the trust of Republicans. They didn't like him. Um, you know, people blame Schiff for uh, for um, making Elise Stefanik an extremist, more extreme now. Um, and so was this, you know, this process argument, did it help to play into Republicans' arguments since they couldn't really defend Donald Trump on the merits? Yeah, I mean, there's two things going on here simultaneously. Schiff was such a boogeyman for the GOP that it gave them something to shoot at. If they had nothing else to shoot, they could say, well, Adam Schiff is trying to trick you because he's, you know, Shady Schiff and all the various nicknames that Trump had already come up with by that point. So it gave them, you know, an Achilles heel that they could try to strike. The process stuff that was going on, though, is happening kind of at, at the same time. Look, there was an argument for giving Schiff part of this process. They didn't have an evidentiary record. They did not have a handoff from a special prosecutor. And so Schiff could have done that phase. But they boxed Jerry Nadler into a corner. So there was never the parallel phase of what had happened in previous impeachments happening in that committee. And yes, that was a strategic choice by Pelosi. But because they were, look, there's no rules in the Constitution about what process you follow when you're going to impeach. It's all based on the precedent. But in the impeachments before this, you would had bipartisan buy-in, at least for the get-go of like, let, should we launch a probe? Yes, we should launch a probe. That didn't happen this time. It was all Democrats for the first impeachment, no Republicans. And the Democrats didn't even try to reach out to the Republicans to talk about it ahead of time, which had happened in the Nixon cases and the Clinton cases. Um, there are the questions about, you know, how, how much access is there to information? Did they run down their subpoenas and actually try to get the first-hand witnesses? Again, that's something that was part of the Nixon and Clinton impeachments, but not part of the Trump impeachments. And so, yes, you pointed out that there's a great deal of hypocrisy on the part of the GOP leaders for this. They knew that they were cutting off the congressional um, oversight power as they were helping Trump. They didn't like it. They actually tried at first to convince Trump to comply with the process. And then when he said no, they basically turned around and said, OK, well, we're going to shoot at the process ourselves, even though we know this is bad for Congress's long term future. So a lot of hypocrisy there. That's what was happening in the House. Meanwhile, in the Senate, you have a band of Republicans who Mitch McConnell appoints to try to basically run Trump's defense because they feel like the process arguments aren't good enough for the Senate trial and they have to go harder and hit on the substance. So to combined, you know, it is the GOP knowingly taking advantage and knowingly shipping their own legislative power as they're taking advantage of this to block for Trump. But the Democrats basically could have, knowing, after we, we, we documented a discussion where they see the potential for these attacks coming down the pike, but they don't actually make any sort of, you know, uh, they don't shift their strategy to anticipate it. They just kind of throw up their hands and say like, oh, well, we'll blame Republicans and that'll be enough. Republicans deserving of that blame, yes, but was that enough to actually keep it from happening? No, and that's the point that we're trying to make in, in illustrating all of this is that based on the reporting, you know, there were these these, these moments where they could have a uh, safeguard. They could have taken steps to to cut off those arguments at the pass before they happen. And instead, they just barreled heads first into them, thinking that they could control the messaging, which obviously they couldn't. The GOP was messaging very strongly at that point on those procedural grounds, saying it's not a fair fight.